Hello, everyone. We're in. Yep. Hi, Cathal. Let's just give it a couple more minutes just to see if anyone else is joining. Just another two or three more minutes, please. Hi, Karen. We have a heavy breather among us, Willis. Is it you? <laughs> I'll drop it down here. Okay, sure. So we'll kick off here. Um, so firstly, apologies, guys. Just in the uh, nick of time, my, my internet seems to be kicking off and on. Um, so my video might go in and out. My name's Nick Bridgepole, and I work in business, de business development for the Belfast Met. Thank you guys very much for joining me today on this webinar series. Today, we will be talking about podcasting te technology. Um, and needless to say, as businesses continue to explore different ways to engage and connect with customers, Many businesses have now chosen to explore podcasting. Today, we have with us Belfast Met Lecturers, uh, Karishma, Willis, and Helen to talk you through the technology, how to structure a podcast and the editing process behind it. Uh, we also are joined with a local company, Peter Corey Productions, who will showcase how they've developed a new podcast. And without further ado, I'll hand you over to Helen, who will commence. Thank you, guys. Hi, everybody. You're very welcome here today to how to start a business podcast. Um, as Nick mentioned, we are going to be talking about the technology, but we are also going to do a much more general chat about podcasting, the value of podcasting, uh, what we all, how we're all involved and work our way through the process. Uh, so basically, as Nick mentioned, I'm a Met lecturer. I also teach in the film school. I work on the Innovate Us programs and I work on video and podcasting with local companies, including Peter Curry Productions and the Connected program, which is what's happening here. I'm handing over now, Krishnama will introduce herself. 
So hi, I'm Krishma, um, and as Nick mentioned, I'm involved with the Belfast Met, very much so. Um, and outside of that, I'm co-director of Belfast Design Week and co-founder of Small Town Big Dreams, which is a podcast house. Um, all the podcasts I work on are based all around creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and it's all about dispelling some of the myths people have around all of these things and having real authentic conversations. So to date, um, we've made about six podcast series, um, and I've also reviewed podcasts with BBC Radio Ulster and reviewed over 125 podcasts. I was counting this yesterday, so it's quite a lot, actually. So looking forward to chatting with everyone today. Um, so I'll hand over now to Peter and Fleur. Hi, I'm Peter Corey. Uh, Originally a singer, but now also a director and producer. And it's under the role of producer that I have the company Peter Corey Productions, which puts on entertainment both for the general public and for corporate events and various other things for councils, etc. And Peter Corey Productions is very much a partnership of myself and Fleur. We are married, which is why we're sitting next to each other. In case I don't <laughs> want to we'll hand over to Fleur. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Fleur Mella, um, and I work with Peter in my role as a producer and also as a choreographer. So we're coming very much from a, a strong theatrical live entertainment background, as Peter's explained there, working sort of across sectors um, in the commercial sector and also in the public sector, which is really what this particular um, podcast has been around for us. This is a new experience for us. Um, coming out of COVID, uh, I know it'd be something we talk about more, but looking to broaden our outreach and other ways of reaching our audiences um, where more traditional routes are sort of currently closed. So I know we'll talk about that a bit more later on. So over to Willis. Yeah, hi, I'm Willis, uh, Willis McBriar, and I'm uh, I'm also a part-time lecturer at Belfast Met and also a business mentor at Belfast Met. Um, and uh, so, Basically, I handle the, the tech side of uh, podcasting and whenever uh, Helen and I are sort of uh, giving people mentoring help and Helen handles the, uh, the production side. So that's me. Back to Helen. So as you can see, we're all kind of involved in podcasting in various capacities. Willis and I supporting uh, small businesses. Karishma, obviously not only making her own but reviewing others and Peter and Flair. Um, Peter Curry Productions is a company that actually Willis and I have been working with very recently on the whole podcasting um, explosion that has taken place. So Krishma, if I can start with you, what got you interested in podcasts? That's a good question, Helen. I was really thinking about this. And actually, what really got me into podcasting was um, several years ago, I listened to Radio 4 while I was at uni um, and programs like Just a Minute, uh, Museum of Curiosity and the News Quiz. Um, I never listened to them live, but I listened to them afterwards in the form of podcasts online. So that's what really got me into it initially. Then after that, the Bugle podcast with Andy Saltzman and John Oliver, which is a political satire podcast, was really brilliant. I listened to that all the time. And then what really, really got me hooked was a serial podcast, which was a fantastic um, crime documentary podcast. But I'll talk a bit about that a bit later on as well. So that's what really got me interested. And Peter, like when people think of you, they primarily think of a outstanding singer, a West End star. And of course, Flair, as you mentioned, choreographer, producer of some note. You know, it's a big jump from very much live performance, live, you know, dance, etc. to podcast. How did you make that? Well, it's, it's all about the same thing. It's all about connecting. It's all about getting in touch with people and getting your message across. It's the exact same as us putting on a show. It's just with the pandemic, it's been the perfect opportunity for us to look at other ways to do that. And this has seen, uh, seemed a good time to do. Karishma, you mentioned uh, just a minute there that I love listening to that. I listen to a lot on Radio 4. Every night I go up and listen to an audio book or a radio play or something like that. And I feel there's a, there's a huge intimacy with something like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think back to when I presented radio when, uh, for BBC Radio Ulster. I remember Harry Adair, a producer, said to me, he said, it's the, it's the most intimate form of, of contact you will have with your audience. And that's the exact same with the podcast. Mm. I also think for us, it's a great opportunity for people to, I guess, get a peek behind the curtain. Because normally what they're seeing from us is very front facing. And the opportunities to maybe break that down a little bit or talk with our audience or talk about the project is... So usually a bit more limited in scope because then you're on to the next thing, on to the next thing. So this is a great opportunity, I think, to bridge that 
and divide as well a and, little bit. And build a relationship. Absolutely. Um, I have to just say there, when you talk about just a minute, what comes into my head, and I think it's not the same thing, is RTE used to have a quiz, just a minute, the 60 second quiz, which I presume is something entirely different. No, this it is, Nicholas, but I'll be checking Nick, that out. Nicholas <laughs> Parsons uh, presented this for years until he passed away last year. God, ah. so it was fantastic. The God that was. Uh, so, yeah. and Willis, what about you then? So, what is your interest in this area? Yeah, well, I... I um, like yourself, Helen worked for uh, for the BBC for quite a while, and I was uh, uh, for thirty plus years, and uh, I was involved a lot with audio, um, to n setting up radio, setting up um, audio links, stuff like that. Since leaving the Beep, I've uh, specialised really in audio and in sound design. Now I teach I, te I teach the pictures as well, but uh, one of the wonderful things about being in a college where there's a lot of people teaching uh, video special effects, uh, teaching motion graphics, teaching all, all of that lovely visual side, animation, all of that, is that they, they, they come to me and say, I know the audio does something, but I just don't exactly know why. And I say, well, it's doing a bit of this and a bit of this, and I, and, and uh, so that that's it's really nice to be kind of the audio go-to guy for um, a, you know, for adding a little bit of something extra to uh, TV, film, graphics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's me. And not only is he an audio guy, he's also the champion at PowerPoint because he's going to now <laughs> step into that role. Um, yep. Before we sort of start talking about making podcasts. So I just want to do a very quick recap on um, just the background of podcasts. So they started in the 1980s with what was originally audio blogging. And I remember certainly um, I organized and have organized the media, Belfast Media Festival for many years. You know, it's one of those hot topics where there was a concern that radio actually would um, go down because of the rise of these sort of blogs and I, and podcasting which clearly is not the case um in the 2000s portable devices you know we all had our little ipods and our, you know there was mp3s and the ipod nano etc and in 2003 we got the opportunity to start downloading and actually a guy a journalist called ben hammersley coined the phrase po podcasting which of course has now become synonymous with this uh, medium in fact we have a little clip which we will just cut into the chat at some point during this webinar and you can have a listen to that in your own time um it's interesting to see how popular podcasting is so if we have a look at the us for a start, apparently 55% of the population listen. That is a huge amount of people. 37% listen monthly, 24% equating to 155 million people listen weekly. Um, and according to um, what's it called, um, host.com, there are 990,000 active podcasts on Apple as of December 2020, and 49 point, or 41.9 million apps of these different podcasts. And it's interesting, I think, to note that 33% of these have started since 2018. So you can see that this is something that is growing and growing quite fast. Um, and it's also interesting to note that they're in over 100 languages, so they are popular right across the piece. If you look at UK, um, Statista.com would say that there's 15.6 million listeners as of 2020. Interestingly enough, nearly 80% of us listen on our smartphones and the lion's share of people in the UK seem to listen while they're traveling or driving. Um, so sort of a quite a, a mix of, uh, you know, huge, huge interest in this whole area. Um, Peter and Flair, where would you be most likely to listen to anything audio like a podcast? Definitely um, driving and we're not doing much of it at the moment, but flying, anything like that, yeah. commuting, I think, you know, it's ideal because, you know, quite often our eyes are quite overstimulated, especially at the moment. So I think mm. it's quite nice to sort of shut down that sense and just be able to use another one, you know, for a change. Yeah, I would be driving and maybe late at night just when you want to chill out a bit and not watch the box. Mm. Karishma, what about you? Um, I love to listen to podcasts whenever I'm cooking. 
um, or cleaning or doing the dishes, that kind of thing, which is quite a different part of my brain that's being used at that time. Because I find if I'm trying to work and also listen, I think that can be quite a challenge trying to focus on it. And I find myself rewinding and restarting things. So I need to be doing something completely different to be able to properly focus and listen. Interesting, interesting. And actually, I think it's probably a very good time, actually, Karishma, um, to talk about, because obviously this is podcasting for business, but just talk a bit about um, your business. Um, uh, obviously, you mentioned the uh, Design Week and you also mentioned Small Town Big Dreams. Tell us some more about yeah. Sure. So Small Town Big Dreams, we started that in 2018 as part of Creativity Month. Um, and really before that, we hadn't ever considered making a podcast. Um, there's this myth around the fact that, you know, uh, podcasts have to be made in a certain way or, you know, you have to have a lot of experience or a lot of equipment to get started. But we just decided to take a risk and start it up in 2018. Um, so since then, we've made about six different series of podcasts. And all our podcasts are really about creative entrepreneurs. A lot of them have been interview based. So interviewing people before the pandemic in person and after the pandemic um, remotely as well, using software like Squadcast. Um, so it's been a really, really interesting journey and we've learned a lot. It's been a, a learning process. We've been learning on the job um, and it's it's been a big learning curve in terms of also editing what's good in terms of music choice. There's a lot of different things you have to pick up along the way. So then along Alongside Small Town Big Dreams, um, Belfast Design Week had been going for quite a few years before we decided that maybe a podcast might be a good way of showcasing some content as well. Um, and the reason for that really was that we were doing it already with Small Town Big Dreams. It made sense to link it up to Design Week. And then also last year with the pandemic, it proved a really good way of having some more content and being able to reach wider audiences. Um, and what we might find with what we're doing is that Belfast Design Week is very local to Northern Ireland and to Belfast but with the podcast you can reach much wider audiences as well so it has the potential then for lifting your brand and making it a bit more global as well so there's a lot of potential in all of these things and it, it can be quite useful for business as well. That's interesting because funnily enough I was going to ask you about the the synergy but clearly you've you've explained that. Uh, Peter and Flair then what what about you tell us about um, Peter Curry Productions and then how the, the podcasting has come in to the landscape. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think we both touched on it lightly earlier, but we're, we're a production company. Um, we're a full service production company, which means we can provide everything, if you like, from top to toe, if that's technical provision, staging, sound and lights, sort of the more nuts and bolts, logistical side of things. Um, but, you know, the, the side that we really love and that drives everything is our creative aspect, um, you know, creating shows, new content, bespoke content for people across different types of mediums, but we're both very much driven from the live experience and that, you know, the live visceral kind of, um, uh, you know, immediacy, it, it, immediacy, immediacy that can only happen in live that you can't tweak and go back and re-edit and change and things can go wrong and the kind of, you know, the exciting element that that brings in a very different way to sort of presenting something to an audience. Uh, and we would be working um, both locally, um, nationally and internationally as well. So I think your point about audience reach for us is a very valid one in terms of, you know, historically we would be lucky to have audience maybe traveling from the States or other parts of Europe to come and see things we'd be doing. And, and this will help make our content much more accessible to them. Yeah, and I think uh, what we pride ourselves on is being imaginative about the way we can produce entertainment, which is what how the podcast came around, really, because we wanted to get the message across that Peter Curry Productions, you know, can't think outside the box, which is very needed at the moment, as we all know, mm. to, to, to be able to deliver live entertainment. Good point. Good point. And Willis, what, what are your thoughts then on the whole magic of podcast? Well, kind of to sum it all up here, it's interesting. I, I mean, I partly also come at it from a, a teaching perspective. Uh, and one of the, the beauties of podcasting, like like radio, you know, is it's got it's got the best pictures. Um, but you, but the thing is, you can listen to uh, to what whatever you want. The the, the the variety is incredible. Wherever you want, um, and and when you want, you know, um, it's you've got this personal. Um, podcasting instrument in your smartphone and you can, you can use the internet to select any podcast you want it, practically all of it is free 
Um, and as, as, as Krishna was saying, um, you can be doing something else while you're at it. Um, you can even be listening in <laughs> on a conversation while you do something you hate. Uh, not necessarily the dishes, but certainly some, there's <laughs> other stuff that has to be done. Um, uh, and uh, as I said earlier, you can find podcastings podcasts on anything, and we will we'll cover um, we'll cover a bit about business podcasts later. But as as folks probably already know, there's podcasts about just about everything. Yeah. There absolutely is. And as you, and sort of another thing that we look at as well is that in terms of making stuff, podcasts are relatively easy to make. Um, and we will go into that in more detail. Um, yes, I think there's no doubt about it. There are podcasts for um, everyone. And I sort of canvassed the family and my son listens to a podcast. Um, he listens to several, but one that came up was Talk Art with Russell Tovey, which is actually literally about art and making it accessible. Um, and the better half, you can work out what he's interested in. His favorite one would be the good, the bad and the rugby. So I think we all know what that one's all about. Uh, Karishma, um, you not only make podcasts, but you review them. Tell us about podcasts that you like or podcasts that you've listened to. Well, Helen, as I mentioned, I listen to a lot of podcasts and 125 are just the ones I reviewed. And I listen to many more beyond that too. So it's very hard picking some of my favorite ones out of those. But maybe just to start off, I'll talk about Serial, which I mentioned a bit earlier. So that was the first podcast I really got hooked on. And that was very niche because it was all about a crime that was committed in the late 90s in America and Baltimore. And it was a documentary following the case and maybe some of the things that people got wrong during that case as well. Um, it's a fascinating podcast um, into the world of crime, but also about how people of different races are treated in America and all sorts of things were uncovered during it. So I find it very interesting. Um, and what I find actually is that podcasts end up linking to lots of other media. So in this case, there were a lot of subreddits. I don't know if you've been on Reddit before, but dedicated to this podcast because people were so hooked that they were trying to uncover themselves and become little detectives along the way as well. So it was a really, really interesting one. Oh. Um, and then over the pandemic, I came across Home Cooking, which is a brilliant podcast. I really recommend it. And that is hosted by Rishikesh Hirwe, who is famous from Song Exploder, which is another podcast and now turned into a Netflix series. And also Samin Nosrat, who is a famous chef, and she's um, done the documentary and book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. So the two of them together are great friends, love food. Samin knows a bit more about food than Rishi, but they have this great conversation. And it's really humorous informal chatty and that's what I really love about podcasts as well you can have that real conversational style and they also are quite educational they teach you about um, things that you can make with not many ingredients so during the pandemic if you had some weird ingredients in your cupboard what could you make from that and people love learning on podcasts so you know what can you give your audience and I think they, they covered that very well in a funny way um, locally, Strategy Sessions is a great podcast I've discovered recently. Um, it's hosted by Andy Jarvis, who's a marketer. So it's all about his business, but also him learning about other businesses and how they do marketing, some of their insights. And he's just a really uh, warm and funny host. I think that's really, really important, actually, with the podcast, finding the right voice within it as well. So those are my three picks for today, <laughs> but there are many. <laughs> no, it, it's interesting. No, I'll be absolutely honest. One called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat doesn't really make me think cooking. I don't yeah. know what I think, but I'm not. I'm not <laughs> turned on to to listen to that to cook with. Um, it, it's too. It, it maybe just too basic, because you know, as women are permanently on a diet, the word fat. <laughs> Just no, definitely well, it's not. It's quite an interesting one, Helen, because it actually just explores all of those things within food. But that's actually a video podcast to say ah. that's a more of a documentary. So you get to see all the lovely food too. So I do recommend that. But home cooking is the one that is a great audio podcast as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I think obviously there's lots of evidence then clearly out there just how hugely popular and diverse podcasts are. And obviously we're here today to talk about podcasting and business and not surprisingly, there's also a plethora of business podcasts. Um, just to, you know, The Economist has uh, more than one Financial Times. There's this bottom line with Evan uh, Davis. There's disruptive entrepreneurship with Rob Moore and Marketing Week have several 
several podcasts and of course Nick Hears Local to Global. So there's a, there's a real mix of podcasts for business and when you are planning on starting a business podcast you know there's lots of things to consider. Um, Karishma what would you say are the key considerations when starting off a, a business related podcast you know what what are you thinking about first? So I would first think about what your niche is, because as you mentioned, there are a lot of niche podcasts and there are a lot of podcasts out there. So what's going to make you stand out and what exactly are you trying to tell your audience? I think that's really, really important. And then coming up with the content as well, it usually requires a bit of planning. Are you going to have guests on your podcast, for example? So planning those things out uh, and not everybody that's a really good business person or, you know, an expert in their yeah. field is necessarily a good guest. So it's worth actually seeing what kinds of things they've done online, if they've done talks before, if they've done podcasts before, listening to them and seeing if they would be worthwhile having as a guest as well, because they're mm -hmm. two quite different things. Um, and I think budget as well, that makes a bit of a difference as well. So, you know, depending on how much you have to spend, maybe equipment, you know, can you afford it? Can you do things that are um, on a slightly smaller scale? Can you bootstrap it to begin with as well? I think a few of those things are important initial considerations. Um, what do you mean by bootstrap it? Well, just, you know, on a very basic, small budget, what can you do for that? And really, you know, for podcasting, it is great because anyone can do it from their kitchen table, really. Um, I suppose you don't want it to be really rough because I think after a while, people will give up even on a good podcast if it's really badly recorded. But you can definitely get something that is, you know, free or cheap or easy to do with limited equipment and it is easily done. Great. And Peter and Flair, what, what what were you thinking about whenever you wanted to start um, the podcast, you know, in terms of content? What were you thinking about or your just that, that baseline? What are we going to even talk about? Well, I, th I think we just the two things that you just want to get your message across and you just want to think, what's my audience? How do I get mm -hmm. it? It's funny, Chrisman touched on a point there. I just want to go back to before I answer that even more. You, you met. What I listened to, I coming up to the American election, I listened to, I can't remember, it was on BBC Sounds, it was uh, Americ, something American or something like that, but it was two BBC reporters and hosts, presenters, and they were much more informal about the way they talked about the whole American election when I went down the Trump hole. Uh, they, they, they were just, they were much less guarded about what they said, and I, and I find that hugely interesting. What we really wanted to do was to, to use this time and this opportunity whenever we couldn't do live theatre to, to hone our skills in a way that, that, will, that will enhance Peter Corey Productions and our communication with our audience and to spread our audience and to maybe get in touch with the wider audience that we hadn't been in touch with before. Um, so really that was it as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when it came to picking the topic, I mean, you know, we're very lucky to have Helen and Willis guiding us through this process. Um, so it's not that we were just sort of, we were sitting, paid to say that, you know, <laughs> scratching our heads uh, in a darkened room and crying about what will we talk about. You know, we would, we were working on a number of different projects and, and on talking them through. You know, the one that we, we ended up going with for our initial sort of, for our initial episode really has a bit of everything it has you know, a response to the current crisis, you know, for our sector, highlighting, you know, artists that maybe haven't worked in a number of months. It's important for us to continue advocating for that support and keeping that message going, keeping that visible where it, you know, it can tend to drop off, you know, relative media with what's going on. And for us, you know, it was great public engagement um, at, a, you know, a public sector level. So good for the times. Great for the towns that we worked on and we'll maybe talk about it a little bit more. Um, uh, so we essentially had performers performing in shop windows over the Christmas period, doing sort of rolling performances, you know, so in response to the health and safety aspects and regulations. So it, there was so much involved in that particular project. It, once we started talking around what were our options, it just sort of chose itself. It became really the most obvious yeah. one of an interesting conversation with public retailers count you know, there were loads of great people we could talk to with a panel. So that was, you know, that made that very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you've all touched on really important things, um, you know, like Small Town Big Dreams is a great title for a podcast series. So, you know, Thank having you. a sort of, a, you know, something that you're going to, that people can find your podcast, like there's a, a great one, Bad Bridget, that Queens do about um, uh, lady, um, 
women from Ireland who emigrated and so many of them ended up in jail um, during the sort of the late um, 1800s, just very, very, you know, and you can't miss, you can't forget that name, Bad Bridget, really powerful. Um, what length are your podcasts going to be? You know, are they going to be going on, meandering? Or, you know, you need to kind of make a decision. Are they sort of half hours and are sometimes they, they will find their own length. And, you know, what topic are you going to talk about? As uh, Flair and Peter said, you know, coming up with the topic and the great project that they did, Window Wonderland. Um, and another useful one is, you know, as Karishma mentioned, what style is it going to be? Panel, guest, and not necessarily the best person that knows about the subject is the best person that's going to be conversational in this environment. And a key thing that um, came to light for Willis and I on a previous project was frequency. Um, a company, uh, Brookvale Vets, outside our tell a lie, Brookfield Kennels, outside Cross Gar, fantastic kennels, brilliant. Um, Chris Hanlon, fantastic trainer, trains dogs for like for the Singapore police, finding bed bugs in um, New York, you, like unbelievably talented. But they are avid podcast listeners. And they said one thing that was very frustrating was when you find a podcast that you loved it was a weekly podcast and then suddenly it just fell off a cliff it wasn't there anymore so a decision make a decision that i'm doing one a week because i'm quiet if you you know you need to then be still doing it one a week even when you're busy and if that's not going to be viable then maybe you change it to monthly so frequency of your podcast is something else you need to think about um Okay, so we've come up with our topic and now it's getting into the nitty gritty of the content and um, what the key considerations are for what the content might be. So again, uh, Peter, you mentioned, obviously, you've sort of alluded to what the um, topic is that we did the podcast on. So how did we or how did you come up with how it would work in terms of content and story, etc.? Well, I think we took your. I think you were right with the first question. How did we? Because you guys were very much involved in that process and, and how we decided what to do and the best way to do it. I just can I just go back to Bad Bridget? That is a great title, and I'm stealing that for a music. Pictures <laughs> 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 think, think all come into your head. Uh, so really, once once we chatted to you guys, it was It became obvious, like many things in, that, that you do in, in entertainment or whatever, or communication, it became obvious what the story should be. And, and then through talking to yourselves, it became obvious the best way to put that across. Uh, and the great thing, as Fleur said about Window Wonderland, was there were so many different stories to tell in it. Mm. There wasn't just the, the story of, of entertainment in the windows. There was a story of people not seeing entertainment for such a long time. There's a story of shops struggling at the moment and needing support. Mm. There was a story about performers who haven't worked for a year. And so there were and there was there were so many different aspects. And of course, health and safety and the the as we called it, the the sort of the thing in the room that we couldn't get away from was COVID-19. So these are all different aspects that that would make interesting conversation. Uh, for anybody thinking that when they go to see, like anything else, like any other production, when, when an audience goes to see it, rightfully in some cases, they just come and watch entertainment and think, oh, that must have been easy to do. <laughs> but but when you when you pull the curtain back and you, and you see the workings that go on for anything, you see the amount of work and, and thought and hours and, and talent that goes into any sort of production. This one was very special from that point of view. Yeah, I think what was also was good about the planning of the storyboard, if you like, or the shape that the podcast was going to take was because there were so many elements, we could easily have gone off on a tangent. Mm. It could have overrun. It could have just got too much into one thing and not another. So by having a really good structured script in terms of the questions we were going to be asking and, and who would be the, who those would be targeted at which guests were really responsible for delivering which pieces of information we created a structure that wasn't restrictive so everybody mm. was free to express that in their own language in their own words you know nobody was coached or anything like that you don't need to do it you just need to kind of gently guide everybody yeah. you know at this point we'll be mentioning this and, and every the guests that we chose I mean we knew they were all going to have great impact put and great feedback and and what was brilliant was that they brought up so many things that we hadn't you know they brought so man, many new topics and, and mm. new ideas into the conversation as well so that you know, that really kept the energy alive and, and made for it feeling very immediate. I think if you're hosting it, you need to know where the com you want the conversation to go. And I think Chris was quite correct. You need to pick pick guests 
who you know will be will converse well <laughs> and not just give you one word answers and mm. push the narrative forward. Yeah, I, I think I think that's absolutely vital. And actually, Krishma, if I can come to you, how do yeah. you sort of start thinking about your content? So I'll maybe give an example of a podcast we're working on. So last year we worked on a podcast called The World Turned Upside Down and it was all about creatives during COVID-19. Um, and again, it was that same sort of struggle that the creative industries have been hugely impacted, but also that some parts of the creative industries have done really well during COVID-19 and others have done really badly because of the nature of what they do. So it was finding the right balance of guests for that to give a realistic picture of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of actually contacting them, making sure that they knew what we were going to be talking about beforehand. Um, and this is actually a slightly um, not controversial, but people have a lot of different opinions about this um, in terms of what questions to send guests beforehand before you interview them. So I think for some people, they like to know exactly what they're going to be asked. But what we find sometimes is that if people prepare too much, it can end up being a little bit unnatural. Um, so it's nice to maybe give them an idea of what's going to be asked and having it as the general topics or themes. So you're not, you know, throwing them completely <laughs> wild a question out of yeah. nowhere. But at the same time, having a little bit of that surprise, letting them think about it when they're talking, it, it gives a more natural flow to it all as well. Yeah, no, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And I think um Flair and Peter absolutely echo that. It's preparing, you know, what, you know, what, are, you know, what's your topic? What is the message you're trying to get across? Remembering that it is a conversation and how might a conversation flow? So you're both, we don't ever want to prep the answers, but we need to prep and have an idea of what kind of messages, what kind of information we might, you know, we want to get and what is the sort of the smoothest order of play. So it's, it's mapping it out, you know, how are we going to introduce our subject? What's the body and what effectively do we want our audience to take away? Um, so, you know, it, it, I think um, the producers absolutely need to prep, but I couldn't agree more. You don't over prep guests because then they're so rigid. Uh, like uh, one we did recently, there was a guest who clearly was quite nervous. And actually then when he realized it was a podcast and he wouldn't be seen, A, that relaxed him. And as the conversation went on, he became incredibly eloquent and some absolutely brilliant gems in, in the conversation and that's really what you're looking at so that's kind of looking at you know topic and big picture and the what you might consider in terms of your content but of course the big big um key thing for this is tech and obviously willis this is very much your bag so i let you drive this end yeah so i'm, I'm going to talk a little bit but well i'm going to talk to peter and fleur and, and krishna about the tech and the first thing i'm going to start talking about is our microphones <clears throat> and uh i i know that uh krishna was saying that uh you know for a lot of just you, you can start very very simply okay but a point comes where if you're stuck if your um recorded voice is starting to sound a bit scratchy or it's it's just not really doing the job you may be wanting to invest in a in a microphone particularly if you if if you're listening to one voice for this a long time and there's anything really wrong with it that starts to grate and sometimes you don't realize that until somebody tells you know somebody a, a listener goes you know it's awfully echoey or it's there's something or or, or there's a, this scratchy noise and uh I've got two examples of, of microphones here. One is uh, the, the Blue Yeti, which is uh, the kind of USB uh, microphone for, uh, for podcasting use. So it costs about £100. But the beauty of a, a USB microphone is that you don't get that little scratchy noise that you get with uh, plug-in uh, mini jack microphones okay that the, their connection isn't really that great and quite often um you you get sort of uh, cable noise and stuff like that whereas with a direct connection to the usb port of your laptop or whatever uh that makes a, a much more solid uh connection now that's the us that's the blue yeti that uh i use uh, that we certainly used for um for the brookville uh, podcast recordings, but I'm going to pass over, to, first of all, over to Peter and Fleur to talk about it. 
Peter's incredibly posh Neumann 105 <laughs> and his focus right Scarlet Box. I didn't know you were going to ask me anything technical, Willis. You know how dreadful <laughs> no, I am. No, just say, just say <laughs> how nice it is. I've been Neumann 105 and I've had one for 12 years. It is a brilliant microphone and if the house was burning, that's what I'd run in and get as long as you're not a uh, That's what I'd run in and get because it is just, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful piece of kit and uh, it doesn't work without the focus scarlet thing which i just know i plug into and switch it on it happens yes i suppose the point being <laughs> we, you know because of peter's singing career we're lucky we happen to have one of these in the house most people will not have one of these in the house but if you've got it use it i suppose is you know the thing you know what do you have that you can already utilize or maybe just slightly upgrade and uh, you know, and, and, and the rest is just taking the right advice, as but, you're suggesting. But there's no point. Uh, you want to make it the smoothest passage to get your message across with anything like this. It, I mean, I bought that mic years ago because it made my life easier to sing. And it's the exact same with a podcast. You get a, something of a decent quality, which makes your life easier and easier for you to communicate. And far yeah. easier in the edit, because as, you, as you're saying, all those pops and small sounds just aren't there which means you have to spend far less time cleaning up you know the ed in the edit process mm. so again it's by having that better bit of kit it's saving you time in the long run and, and you're much more efficient about as you say if you're wanting to do this weekly that's a time commitment so anything that saves you time is good yeah so um let me pass across to krishna to talk about <laughs> First of all, to talk about mics, uh, what her favorite okay. mics are, but then to, to kind of segue into into the edit as well, into what you record on and where you where you do your editing. Sure, and you've really sold me on that mic now, Peter and Fleur. So I'll be <laughs> picking that up and being shot. If you ever want to sing that's the one to go for. Good to know. Good to know. So I'll be really controversial here and say that this is my. Uh, mic at the moment and what i found was that i tried out a few different mics with my laptop when i was doing remote recording and it all sounded quite tinny and unnatural slightly cold and what actually worked really well was my voice recorder on my phone so what i've been doing is simultaneously recording on my phone and also doing the talk whether that's on squadcast or zoom or whichever um, recording software i have for the actual interview so I have two files. I have the one that's recorded on that software and then I have the one on my phone. And I find that always the phone one is of a higher quality because really what we have in our smartphones are these really sophisticated devices that we're carrying around everywhere with us that are brilliant for voice recording. Of course they are because we talk on them all the time, but also they're great for images as well because I was talking to my uh, videographer friend recently and asking them for camera recommendations and they said just get a really good smartphone. So I recommend a really good smartphone as a, a mic or voice recorder. And then going into um, software as well. So we were recording initially in person. So in person, we were using a Tascam portable recorder, but then we had to switch over to remote recording. Of course, Zoom had really taken off at the start of pandemic, of the pandemic. And then we were also looking at other ways of recording and Squadcast, I came across that um, at a webinar that I attended about podcasting. And there was a podcaster called Jay Klaus that recommended it. And it was really, really good because what you could do is set it up almost like a Zoom event. It would give information to um, your interviewee and they would get um, an idea of what they needed ahead of time. So things about headphones, where to sit, how long oh. beforehand to be there. So I thought that was all brilliant as well as part of that. Um, and then Audacity is great software as well. That's my co-host was using quite a lot more than me for um, our collaborative podcast ventures as well. But there were quite a few other pieces of software too, um, things like um, automatic script writing from your podcast. So um, software like otter.ai, for example, can do that kind of thing. Um, so there's quite a few things out there, but Squadcast was the real you know, big sell for me last year. It was definitely worth our investment into it. Yeah, the, the lovely thing about um, Audacity, uh, again, for the beginner, is that it's free and it's really pretty easy to learn. I think you'd both agree, uh, Peter and Fleur, that, uh, you know, coming to it for the first time, it was really quite, uh, quite understandable, quite easy to get into. I'm guessing we're not your usual clients type thing because 
I've a, I have a huge experience with working in a studio and rec- recording albums and, and watching the sound engineer do the magic, but I never have to do it. Whereas with with the, you know once or twice I've done the odd thing with Garage Band, but Audacity for me, for us I would say, and, and I'm I'm not great technically. I find it quite easy to to get my head around. It's also it seems to be an awful lot of help attached to Audacity in terms of you know, the help functions and, and because so many people widely use it, there's lots of people chipping in going, you know, here's a way around this particular question. So I think there's a good resource attached to it as well. Yeah, so um, that's that's the sort of um, the mics and the uh, recording bit uh, handled. Um, now, our expert on uh, hosting, I think, is probably... Uh, Krishma, so I'll l- let you talk a little bit about hosting, both um, file hosting. How, how do you get your stuff to the world? Good question. I would definitely not call myself an expert at all, but um, I suppose this is the method that we have been using so far and we find it works very well. So we've been using SoundCloud mainly for uploading all of our podcasts um, and it's quite straightforward. Um, You can upload your file in different formats. What we find is very good is a WAV file. It's just a bit clearer in terms of audio, but you can also upload MP3s and other types of files as well. Um, And once you upload your file into something like SoundCloud, so SoundCloud initially gives you a free uh, plan where you can upload a limited number of podcasts but if you want you know say eight to ten or more podcasts then you actually need to upgrade to a professional account so it gives those two options you can test it out with a free account and then you can upgrade as well but once it's on soundcloud it gets sent out to all the other app hosting um, sites so you know things that gather all the apps from all over the world so you can um, curate your own list of app or podcasts that you want to listen to as well so um, it's quite quite handy that way and then from there you can send it to things like spotify and itunes and other bigger platforms as well for your podcast. So it's a good starting point to get your um, podcast uploaded and then send it out to the world through all these other platforms too. And you can also embed SoundCloud files into websites and they give you a nice little clean sort of upload with a little image of your podcast and you can hit play on your website quite easily. So it's quite straightforward to do. They, They give you the code for embedding. Um, we've used Squarespace as an actual website for our podcast because I think that's quite important when you start doing more and more series to have um, somewhere that's actually just showcasing your podcast on the web um, and also having things like behind the scenes parts of your podcast, things like blogs or other things that weren't covered in the podcast um, and maybe even having things like scripts if you have the time or budget to do that as well. Alongside your audio, it's nice to have a written script as well that people can follow. So all of those things can go onto a website and we find Squarespace is great if you don't know much coding, uh, but you have a good visual eye for design, then that's a great way of getting it up and running. So We've used that quite a lot. Yeah, that's uh, and and so Peter and Fleur, you're at the kind of the other end of uh, the podcasting journey. Uh, well, I'm sure I'm sure Krishna probably feels she's in the middle of the podcasting journey, but um, you're you're really just trying to find uh, what works for you and uh, how's yeah, that been going? We, I mean, we're looking to host this through our website because you know part of this is as you say, where do people find you? You know, this is not something that people know us for doing. Mm. So before you can sort of build that level of presence, you know, we already have a presence there with the website um, and our audience that would already, you know, we're already in touch with through that. So it makes sense to us to host it via our website. And we've been looking at um, one called Anchor, which also looks like it sort of does the job really well. It also allows you sort of an initial tryout um, phase where you can get to grips with it and, you know, then you obviously have an option to upgrade that subscription as well. So it sounds sort of reasonably similar to SoundCloud, um, which we can have a look at at as well. But yes, absolutely. I think getting it onto the website and and having ownership of it in that way is good, you know, because Mm. as you say, Karishma, you can control the other additional content that goes in and around it. We can also link to... You know, we already have sort of visuals, video imagery of that particular project on our website. So then it's a very quick, easy link across for, you know, for anybody that's interested to see a bit more of it, to to not have to go digging really to find that. That's super. That's, that's been a really, I think, a really good 
tour of all that we know so far about uh, about podcasting. So now is a good point, I think, to um, ask. There's just a little sum up. But now just to ask if anybody's got any questions. And perhaps, yes, here he is. Uh, Nick has joined us again. Uh, so over to you, Nick. Hi, everyone. So it doesn't look as if as if anyone's dropped any questions in the chat. But um, I've got a question for Karishma. Karishma, you and I are, we know each other from outside of the Met as well, but I didn't know that you actually had a podcast. And maybe maybe I missed this at the beginning, but what, could you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you're actually doing? In yeah. So with the podcast, it's um, Small Town Big Dreams is now our sort of podcasting house, if you will. That sounds very fancy, but it is very small scale at the moment. Um, but two of our podcast series are through that, and they're just called Small Town Big Dreams. It's all about creative entrepreneurs and they're um, sharing their stories because what we found is that there's a lot of podcasts for specifically just business or tech, but about creative entrepreneurs and how they do business, because that's very niche and different, that there wasn't very much good content out there. So we thought that's what we try and do with our podcast and also being very local to Northern Irish creatives as well, because of course it's different living here to say Dublin or London or anywhere else. So it's being very specific, local focus and also creative entrepreneurship. Great, great, and 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 for Peter and Fleur, um, you you touched on that. Um, you guys, uh, this is something that that is recently new to your business. This this area of podcasting, and um, you're currently engaging your audience through your website as well. At the moment, I was just wondering, um, could you tell me a little bit more about what what your production company does? You know. Um, so we are, you know, work predominantly in live events and we would historically be producing shows, tours, and um, we'd hit touring sort of locally, nationally, or, or you know, going out internationally potentially. Um, we would be working quite heavily in the corporate industry as well. So bes bespoking live entertainment for events, for clients to a brief. Um, so not necessarily just bringing one product and going, this is what we sell you know, multiple times over. Generally what we're doing is from scratch with with the majority of projects. We're always reinventing new projects, new ideas, um, and working sort of drawing very much from live. So we both have a strong theatrical background. Um, my background would cross over a bit more commercially into fashion as well and that side of the industry. So, you know, in terms of visually, musically um, and sort of artistically, what our influences that we'd be bringing in would be coming really from across a wide range mm. of sort of inspiration and, and then bringing that from creation all the way through to delivery. And I was saying we're a full service production company, so we can bring in the stage sound and lights, the screens, all the infrastructure mm. in and around the presentation of that work or we can just bring the work really depending on what the client or the event or or the show needs so you know we would have a, a big degree of flexibility from really very small intimate work to things really on on a much larger scale so there's a, a real kind of variety in the kind of work that we would be working at fantastic fantastic thank you guys very much thank thank you all um we have a question from Claire, um, and this is around RSS feeds. I don't know, Willis, would this be, would this be for you? Uh, and Karishma, um, this, yeah, yeah, more likely for Karishma, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you're probably talking about <laughs> podcast. The sign type question. Yeah. 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 So I suppose with RSS feeds, so it's basically, you know, um, how podcasts are picked up by um, almost podcast curating software. So you can have your own sort of list of different podcasts that you listen to and that you like, and you can subscribe to them through the RSS feeds. So I suppose once you have it up and running on SoundCloud and on the other platforms, they get picked up by these podcast aggregators, and then people can subscribe to your podcast and follow them on all of these platforms. Um, but it's good to have a starting point of upload. So places like SoundCloud or Libsyn or I think there's Sprout and there's lots of different ones and Anchor, you can upload them into that and then they get sent out to all of the other um, podcast aggregators. So that's how people would subscribe to your podcast as well. 
Okay, okay, thank you guys. There's lots of brilliant uh, comments coming in. Uh, we're going to have to rush this, but w one final question. Um, is there any advice for potentially monetizing podcasts, or can you make money from podcasting? Yeah, um, I think you definitely can. I mean, we haven't made a lot of money from podcasting yet. I think it all depends on the audience. I think you can do things like advertising. You'll find a lot of podcasts advertise things like Squarespace and other um, companies um, on their podcast, which I think is quite effective. And you can also maybe get um, hosted by, you know, Spotify and other places if you can pitch your podcast to them and they might also support you that way and you can have things like Patreon which is almost like a, a mini Kickstarter for yourself to, to self-fund a podcast as well if they're interested in your niche. So there's many different ways of approaching it. Fantastic. Fantastic. So thank you guys very much. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the uh, webinar, my name's Nick and I work for the Center for Social Inclusion and Economic Development. My job is to fund startups, scale-ups and established businesses. The Belfast Met has three funding, four funding streams that we, um, that we help businesses with. I'm just going to give you a quick top line overview of them as well as I'm going to drop in the contact email to get in contact with one of the members of the team uh, if you wish to avail of any of these funding streams. The first one is Connected, which is funded by the Department for the Economy. This is very much around a knowledge exchange. Um, it enables you as a company to access specialist equipment and facilities. We have a uh, sound studio as well as various um, recording equipment that you can access. Um, and through Connected, we would not only work in the areas of uh, recording or sound equipment, but we also look at emerging technology and new product development. Um, and we also work in the areas of cybersecurity, data visualization, advanced materials, and life and health sciences. Uh, the second funding stream that I'm going to talk to you about is um, Innovation Vouchers. It is a £5,000 voucher that is awarded to you. Um, you would apply for this through Invest in I. And through, uh, once you're awarded the voucher through collaboration with the Belfast Met, we can help you uh, deliver on new improved products, processes, and services. Um, we also have a, um, an accredited stream called Skills Focus where the Department for the Economy will fund up to 75% uh, of the delivery costs for any company that's under 250 employees. Um, that has now recently moved to 100% of the delivery costs being funded by the Department for the Economy. Um, look, this is a lot of information to take in. So once again, please do get in contact with us and we will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you. The last funding stream I'd like to talk about is um, Innovate Us, where if you are a business under 50 employees, you can avail of up to 60 hours of fully funded mentoring. Um, and this can be in the areas of fashion, textiles, and design. Uh, Fleur, you have a background in fashion, maybe we, we can look at something uh, in that area with you. We also have, um, we also help in areas of new product development, food production, IT programming, and last but not least, creative and digital media. So if you like what you've heard today and you would like to get in contact with us in order to work with Willis and Helen, please do do get in contact. I'm dropping the email in right now. Just like to say, you know, um, something we didn't mention at the beginning, just while Nick's tapping that in, is that um, Peter Curry Productions has come through um, this route via Innovate Us. So, you know, for any companies thinking about doing it, definitely get in touch. 
um, because we had a lot of conversations with the team and it's been a really, it's been a great experience. We've really enjoyed it. Yeah, and Willis, Willis and Helen, fantastic team. Couldn't ask for anyone better. Just don't ask Willis to cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I have no hair. I have no hair. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone thanks thanks to all the attendees thank you it's been brilliant thank you yeah. thanks a million everybody thank you thanks, thank you. thanks to karishma thank peter and flair for your time really much appreciate i couldn't have done it yeah. without you thank you this is a, yeah it's been a, a fantastic session yes really thank good. you guys bye bye everyone bye, bye. bye. bye.